Hi, and welcome to Car Stuff. I'm Scott. And I'm Ben. And Ben, we recently went to the Dream Car Exhibit at the High Museum of Art in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, and we saw an incredible vehicle there. We saw the Firebird XP21. Oh yeah, look at this crazy contraption, Scott. It's like a jet on wheels. Yeah, it's like a jet. That's, I pretty much just said that. Oh yeah, I guess you did. And the Firebird really is a jet-powered car. I mean, it's got a 370 horsepower, world fire, turbo power, gas engine, and it weighs 2,500 pounds. Wow, and here's where it gets a little bit weird. They think this car can go up to 200 miles per hour, but they're not exactly sure how fast it can actually go. Right, because at the time, there was only one guy who was actually qualified to drive it. That's right, a man named Emmett Conklin, and he tested the Firebird up to about 100 miles per hour, but then he had to shift into second gear, and when he did, the wheel started to slip and he lost traction, so he had to back it down. We don't really know how fast it could go. Yeah, he was just trying to avoid that crash, right? Yeah, exactly right. I look at the vehicle's shape. That bullet shape might not be the most practical thing, but the pieces of a good idea are there. Sure, jet engines are faster and more powerful than typical car engines, but the question is, why don't we use them in cars today? Good question, Scott, because we know that the Firebird was tough to steer, but it also wasn't shaped at all like a typical car. Yeah, and some of those handling problems can be traced to the shape of the vehicle rather than the power source. But other car manufacturers took this idea a step further and they actually made a production gas turbine car. Yeah, that's right. There was the Chrysler Turbine Car Program and that ran from about 1962 until 1964, an honest to God gas turbine car in production. Now, this thing could run on multiple types of fuel. It could run on diesel, it could run on kerosene, it could run on JP4 jet fuel, it could even run on vegetable oil. Yeah, that's right. Unfortunately though, the program was scrapped as were nearly all of the gas turbine cars from Chrysler. Nowadays, we know there are a few simple but compelling reasons that we don't use these sorts of engines in production cars, yeah, right? That's right, and the first reason is that gas turbine engines run you know, a lot more efficient, but only when they're at higher speeds. Yeah, and cars, most cars, tend to run at a lower speed. So this engine is not ideal for a daily driver. And fuel economy may be a concern as well. With gas turbine powered cars, they have kind of an inferior throttle response when compared to piston driven engines. So no matter how cool they might look, and they do look really cool, it just might not be worth it to have gas turbine engines in most cars. Well, that's true. I mean, at least for now, but who knows? I mean, with future innovations and processes and technologies, the future may bring us something very exciting. Yeah, so let us know what you think about gas turbine cars in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so that you can always stay up to speed with the latest car stuff. Up to speed, did you? I get it. It's like a pun. It's kind of a pun. It's a good pun. I like a one to ten. Or... Mm, I get negative two. It has a 370 horsepower, world fire, turbo power, gas engine, and it weighs 2,500 pounds. Yeah, and here's where it gets kind of crazy, Ben. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I did it. I set it down.